Welcome fellow Factorians. Today I'm going to be taking you through my new and improved method for recording a time lapse. Some of this is not the method I have used to create my time lapses up to this point, but it is certainly the method I will be using from now on. A special thanks to Matthew Pocock for investigating and pushing me to improve what was a very time consuming process. You are a star. Okay, on with the tutorial. First step, pretty obvious, install the mod. I use Timelapse Base Edition and this is what this tutorial is going to focus on. So install the mod and launch the game. Next stop for me is to fiddle with the quick bar settings to get the two time lapse buttons positioned on it. You're going to use these two buttons a lot so it is useful to have them easily located. One is to pause and unpause the time lapse so you can easily start and stop the recording process. The second opens up the time lapse menu. When we do that, we are confronted with a whole load of stuff. Top of the list is name. I think this is so that you can record several places in your factory all at once, so you can name several cameras and know what you are recording. The camera name will be prefixed onto the end of the time lapse file names, so I'm guessing this is to easily distinguish between the different cameras. I'm guessing all of this because I haven't tried fiddling with it. I'm not sure how it would work in a time lapse to have several areas being filmed at once but it is there if you want it, I think. Next is resolution. Pretty straightforward this. Just input the resolution of the time lapse you want to record. Frame rate and speed gain, I think I have sussed, but then I thought I had it sussed until I started playing with it this morning. In the figures shown on the screen at the moment, the time lapse will record a screenshot 25 times every 60 seconds. So frame rate equals 25, speed gain equals 60. If we change the values to 50 and 120, then the time lapse will take screenshots at exactly the same rate because it is the proportion of one over the other. Zoom ratio is a number I will get into a bit later. In fact, I'm going to go into more detail on all of these numbers a bit later because they will come into play with transitions. For the moment, we just want to get the time lapse set up right. For the time being, we are going to leave these numbers alone. If you want your time lapse to show the Alt button stuff, then click the Show Entity Info tick box. I always have this checked. Then we want to delete all of the default trackers that have been set up for us, so click on the little cross next to the Player, Rocket and Base options. The mod has a way of tracking the player's location, the entire base and the rockets, and I think it has a method of transitioning from one to the other automatically, but this is a bit of a black box, so I don't use it. I want to be able to entirely control what the camera is recording. I don't want to rely on a computer to guess what I want it to do at any one time. So all these default trackers, I don't want them. Then we are going to hit the tracker tab at the top of the screen, hit the new tracker option at the top and select area tracker. This is essentially a fixed tracker. We are going to tell it a series of coordinates and it will record the box that is bound by those coordinates. If you are interested in the coordinate system, then if we name the values on the screen as x1, y1, x2 and y2, then this is the direction of x and y in the game. Not a system I am used to, but hey, it is what it is. For these values of x and y, we have two options for extracting them from the map. Either we can physically run our little dude to the top right and bottom left parts of the box we want to record, and hit this button at each of these lo two locations, or we can use a series of map markers. I tend to prefer the running method. So if we run our little dude to the top right and hit the button, we can immediately see the coordinates change. Do the same for the bottom left and bingo, we have our bounded box. It will turn red if there are obvious problems. We have our center and box size listed here. Important bits of information, but also probably completely obvious. For these first few shots we are going to unselect the smooth camera button option. This will become useful later. And finally, before we can start recording, we need to delete all of the trackers that were already set up for us, the player, base and rocket options. Now we want to hit the pause button that we set up in the quick bar and go back into the camera settings and hit the play button beneath main. And now we hit the add tracker drop down and select area. From now on, whenever we hit the button in the quick bar, it will start or stop the recording process. 
At this point, it is probably important to talk about the frame rate you want to record at. For me, I have found it really important to know what frame rate I want to record at right from the beginning. What frames per second am I going to run the final video at? How long is the factory going to take to build? How long do I want the final time-lapse video to run for? To run through a few examples, Angel and Bob, expected build time I thought was going to be about 400 hours. Final video was going to be run at 30 frames per second and my anticipated final video run length was to be 8 to 10 minutes. 8 to 10 minutes at 30 frames per second is between 14,400 and 18,000 total number of frames. 400 hours times 60 minutes is 24,000. So I would need to record the time lapse at a rate of between 14,400 divided by 24,000 frames per minute and 18,000 divided by 24,000 frames per minute. Let's just say for argument's sake it was between 0.5 and 0.75. I also don't continu continually record the game. There are substantial parts where I had to turn it off to fix problems or upgrade or manage biters. So for argument's sake I record at one frame per minute and that should be about right. And that's what I did. The final build length was 421 hours and the total frames was 15,772. So I was right on the money. In my vanilla Megabase 2 time lapse, the expected build length was about 200 hours. Final video was going to be run at 30 frames per second and the anticipated final video was going to be 8 to 10 minutes. So it was exactly the same as Angel and Bob, just half the build time. So I recorded at 2 frames per minute and bingo, I was about right again. In general terms, if you want a 5 to 8 minute final video, then a 50 hour factory should be recorded at between 6 to 8 frames per minute, a 100 hour factory at 4 to 5 frames per minute, a 200 hour at 2 frames per minute, and a 400 hour factory at 1 frame per minute. These are my ballpark figures for the general runtime. There are also moments when I play around with the frame rate to record certain parts either very quickly or very slowly. In my recent Ribbon World time lapse, I used different frame rates during the nuclear startup to give a sense of time. So when the first uranium shipment arrived, I was recording at 18 frames a minute, I think. I did that for about 2 minutes. Then I reduced it to 12 and did that for about 4 or 5 minutes. Then I reduced it to 8 and ran it for about 9 or 10 minutes and so on until I was recording at 1 frame per minute for about an hour or so. It just helped to make a part of the factory I knew would take a long time interesting to watch on the time lapse. Also in my most recent factories, I've started trying really hard not to turn the time lapse off at all. In my racetrack time lapse, there was a moment when I obviously switched it off for a significant length of time and when I turned it back on there was a big jump in the visual image. I didn't like this. So now on, instead of turning off the time lapse, I just switch it to record at one frame per minute and thus any small changes in the factory are at least captured in some way and there aren't any big jumps. So that's frame rate sorted. And because I like to keep my math simple, I leave speed gain at 60, and then whatever number I put in frame rate is the number of frames recorded per minute. So now we have all that sorted, we can hit the start recording button in the quick bar and generate our first time lapse shot. I always check the first shot to make sure it is recording what I want it to, but once that is done, we can crack on with the game. However, very soon you will want to move the camera location to another area, and this is where the fun really used to begin for me. This was a process that used to take forever, but hopefully now is much, much more manageable. So pause the time lapse, open up the time lapse menu, and go into the tracker tab. Check the smooth camera movement box and name your first area tracker something. I'm just going to use area one. Create a new area tracker and enter the coordinates of the new box you want the camera to move to and then name it something else, say area two. Hit the play button next to the new area tracker to turn it on and do the same with the old tracker to turn it off. Now go into the cameras section. Here we need to ask ourselves a new question. How quickly do we want the camera to move? I don't like the camera to move quickly. I have very strict parameters. Due to my previous method, I know exactly numbers wise what I want the camera to do. I don't like my camera to make rapid movements. It really messes up the time lapse. So if I'm really zoomed in, 
then I don't want to move the camera in any direction more than three or four squares per shot. And yes, I use trigonometry to ascertain what the absolute movement is, not just the relative movement in any X or Y direction. If I'm relatively zoomed out, then I will aim for five to eight squares per shot. And then if I'm really zoomed out, I'll aim for 10 to 16. They are my rough guides. So you have a current location and you have a new location and you need to work out which corner is moving the furthest. That is now our total movement. Now from my guide earlier, work out how far you want the corner to move per shot. Divide the total movement by the frame rate times by how far you want that corner to move per shot. And the number that you get out is the required zoom ratio, I think. This is all relatively new to me. I have tried eight different sets of values in these boxes this morning and all of them obey this rule, but I haven't tried everything. So if you try some extreme numbers in these boxes, it might doing something strange. All these values worked with a speed gain of 60. That is all I can really say at this moment. Now go to the add tracker option and add the new area to tracker and move it to the top of the list. At this moment, the time lapse is perfectly primed to start executing the transition to the next shot. The moment you hit the quick bar button, it will immediately start moving. With the time lapse menu still open, we can monitor the position of the time lapse as it moves by watching the coordinates of the position in the camera tab. So hit the quick bar button to start recording and see what it does. Hopefully the sensor should only increase by the amount you calculated earlier, roughly. If you are doing a heavy zoom shot, it might only change by anything up to 50% of what you intended because we define the total movement at the corner and not the center, but it is a good approximate guide. If it starts doing something weird or something you didn't intend, then don't play around with any of the numbers until it has finished the movement process. Don't pause or unpause. The moment when it seems to get really confused are when it is in the middle of something and you mess with it. Maybe even save the game before starting any transition process so you can go back easily. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. And that is that, I think. I've held off doing a time-lapse tutorial for some time because my old method was really primitive and took a long time. I didn't want to give anyone the tools to subject themselves to that amount of pain. It wasn't worth it. But from what I've been playing with this morning, the whole process seems to be a million times simpler. So I didn't have any plans for the day. This is what I've decided to make. I haven't made a single time-lapse video using the transition method I have described in this tutorial, but I feel I've run through enough tests to prove that it works. I guess what I'm saying is that I can't be 100% certain of anything I say about the transitions, other than that this is my best understanding at this point. I'll probably run through one more vanilla time-lapse to test all this out before I move on to another Factorio challenge, so I guess it might change in the future depending on what I learn but we'll see. I'm pretty sure everything up to the transition part of the tutorial will stay the same, so even with changes, it would still be relevant. That is a pretty heavy dose of doubt to finish the tutorial with, but I want to be honest about my current understanding of the TLBE mod. I'm always learning with this game. That is a process that never seems to end. I hope it's been useful. Till next time.